Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Simul. 2020 was a tough year to say the least, but now that we are in the new year, we can use this as an opportunity to be inspired and make the necessary changes that we want to. And so here are 21 things that I like to share with you that I'm gonna be taking into 2021. And hopefully these things can inspire you to do your own reflection and see what lessons you could learn from last year and things that you wanna implement change so you can overall live a happier and more fruitful 2021. Now, keep in mind as well that this is gonna be quite a long video. I don't know how long exactly it's going to be but it's going to be a long one feel free to skip around the video i'll put timestamps in the description as well so you can jump wherever you'd like to you can grab a hot beverage sit back relax and listen as i go through 21 things that i'm going to be taking into this year so let's get straight into it first one is the best time is right now Time is constantly moving, so it's not slowing down for anyone. Don't wait for the right people, the right time, the right place. Just make a start right now at this moment. Go make it happen. It is that you got. I could spend hours, weeks, months trying to plan videos. If I didn't start when I started initially, then I doubt that any of this would have really gotten done. I worked with what I had. Right, I had, a, I had a camera that I got, I think three years ago, a Canon G7X Mark II. Now granted, it is quite a good camera, but I just used that. The focus would sometimes go out of whack. I would use my room lighting. I'd use my, I'd use my block up blind as a background. You just gotta make use with whatever it is that you got. And then eventually as you go on and you start enjoying the process a lot more, then you can start upgrading whatever equipment it is that you need. The most important thing is, is just start right now. Don't wait. And number two, Never underestimate your environment. This is something I picked up when reading James Clear's Atomic Habits. I feel like if there's one book that you want to pay real close attention to and focus on this year and really reflect and go through and review it, it's probably this book. One of the main points that he was making in the book was that we greatly underestimate our environment. How our environment is designed can actually be conducive or not conducive for our habits. Let's say for example, you want to practice guitar more. If your guitar is packed away in a closet, in a bag, the chances of you picking it up and practicing it is very, very minimal. But if you take it out of the bag and you place it, for example, in the middle of your room, then the chances of you picking it up are gonna be much higher. So you can actually create an environment that is conducive for your habits. Never ever underestimate your environment. Three, never underestimate stereotypical practices. I struggled a lot with anxiety and tough times last year, given all that was going on. And so it was actually introspecting and a gratitude journal that actually made the difference for me. And I'm hoping that it can also make the difference for you. But we hear about it like a numerous amount of times, right? People are like, oh, you should write down three things that you are grateful for at the end of each day. I know for sure that when I first did it, I didn't really commit to it. And I didn't really reflect. I didn't really do it with intention or purpose, but the fact that I was going through such a tough time last year made me be a lot more reflective, it made me be a little bit more intentional so that when I actually got to writing things down that I was actually grateful for, I tried to actually really find meaning in those things. And by the end of the year, even right now, I'm seeing and feeling a lot more fulfillment and a lot happier with the things that I currently have right now. It's these practices that are considered quite stereotypical that actually made the big difference for me. So I encourage you this year, especially have gratitude journal introspect, simple things, right? Just commit to at least one of them or have your own practice meditation or whatever it is. Just make sure that you stick to one of those things and do it intentionally and with consistency. And hopefully that brings a lot of benefit to you. Four, work hard and be patient. When people tell you to slow down, it doesn't mean that you should binge watch Netflix all day, every day, at every single living, breathing moment because you have all the time in the world. That's not what it means. Right? What it actually means is that right now in this present moment, you work hard and you do everything to the best of your ability, but don't be too concerned about the results because they are in the future. Right? Don't be concerned about, oh, you know, I've got to have this done by now. You know, I've got to have a relationship by this age. I've got to have X amount of dollars by this age. I've got to get a promotion by this age, have my life sorted at this age. That's too rushed. When they mean slow down, they mean that, hey, relax your thinking. Just be chill with that. In the present moment right now, work hard so you can eventually have those things in the future, yes, right? but don't be too concerned about the result. The result will come with patience. Five, kind gestures can make big differences. 
while Melbourne was in lockdown last year. This is quite an exaggeration, but I was like, oh, my friends don't care about me. No one's reaching out. My life sucks. I'm so lonely. It was especially difficult when we felt like we couldn't really leave the house and we just had to stay indoors. That was quite concerning for me and it actually feels quite lonely. One of my good mates, he did send me a text though. And it was like, I hadn't really spoken to him in I think a couple of months, but he just said, hey man, wanna go for a walk? And it was like that moment just made such a big difference to me. It's like, oh, so, someone's thinking about me. It's so nice. It's the simple things that can make such a big difference to people's lives and make him you know, make their day. In fact, that whole, that message made my whole week. And so I think we place a lot of importance on doing big gestures, on doing really big things, but it's actually the small things that count. Now on to number six, stay busy. Busy is a blessing. This is something that I always say. I'm one of those people where I feel like if I'm not busy then something's wrong and I end up going into like quite a negative headspace. But it's like as if the mind just gets caught up in like old habits that it used to have. So like if I'm not busy, then I'm losing myself in stuff like TV shows that makes me feel like I am busy, but I'm actually not doing anything productive. So instead, I'd be better off using my time to make like a YouTube channel and make a couple of videos. And that way my time would be lost in writing, shooting, and then editing the video because those things take a lot of time. But at least it's time that's put towards something that's a lot more productive than just binge watching a TV show having enjoyment for the time that you're watching it and maybe a little bit after, but then leading on to no real payoff. Which reminds me, if you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. It'll mean a lot to me and it'll make my day. All right, on to number seven. Here we go. No comfort zone. As the saying goes, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. If we are in a position where we want to do better, be better, have more, have a better lifestyle, then we have no choice but to get uncomfortable because that's going to require change. If we keep doing what we've always done, then we're gonna keep on getting what we've always got. One good way to combat this is to consistently learn, grow, and change. Don't be stagnant, don't stay still for too long. If we do do that, then we get very used to our way of life. And then for us to change becomes very, very difficult. In the beginning, right? Yes, it's going to be hard to change. But after we start changing, if we can continuously keep doing that, even if we get to the next stage, the stage that we want to be, the chances are that once you get here, you're gonna wanna get there too, right? So keep learning, keep growing, keep changing so that you're used to being uncomfortable quite consistently. Right, then that way life's a lot more fluid. And this kind of echoes into the eighth point, which I believe Hugh Jackman said, which was staying in shape is easier than getting in shape. Now I believe when Hugh Jackman said this, I think he made it in the context of fitness. For those of you that, you know, I think some of us last year, I think we struggled a lot with our fitness, being indoors and everything. Some of us made it out and we did quite well, but I was one of the people that struggled quite a lot. And then to kind of lose yourself and lose your body in that time is, it's a lot easier. Like it's very tempting to, you know, have dessert after every meal, right? Which we never really used to have before. I wasn't doing that. Um, <laughs> it's easy to make unhealthy choices when you're stuck indoors. You can't go to the gym anymore. And so you can lose yourself and your body in the process. So it seems like for you to go back to your previous level of fitness, it is a lot harder to do that than it is you just staying in shape throughout the whole of lockdown. It might take you four months to lose your body, but it seems like it's gonna take a lot longer to kind of build it back or maybe the same amount of time frame, but a lot more effort mentally for you to kind of build it back. Now, Hugh Jackman made the reference with regards to fitness, but you can even apply this to your lifestyle. If you are used to having good habits, for you to build good habits and maintain it, it's actually a lot easier than it is for someone that has bad habits to eventually kind of build it because they gotta change. It's gonna take effort for them, to, for them to get from here to here. It's just, it's just how it works. So on to the ninth point, play the long-term game. It's easy to do tasks that give us immediate gratification. If you compare scrolling through social media for one hour every day for the next month, the happiness that you get out of that, if you compare that to successfully going to the gym one hour every day for the next month and getting an inch on your bicep, I think the happiness that you compare to that if you value fitness a lot and aesthetic, is gonna be a lot more than it is from you scrolling through TikTok for an hour. There's different levels of happiness. Some things are gonna get you a certain level of happiness and other things are gonna get you another level of happiness. Some things obviously take a lot more effort than the other, but overall, improving our lifestyle, we should be going for more long-term gains. And I think that's one thing that I really wanna focus on this year especially. I feel like last year, I spent a lot of time chasing very short-term gains, which really had no payoff at all. I feel like I'm only a little bit better than I was this time last year. 
but this time next year in 2022 January I want to be miles ahead where I am right now and so I'm sure that you'd like the same and it's going to start with us chasing long-term goals and being consistent with it and be disciplined for it than us chasing our very short-term gratification stuff all right now 10th point discipline versus motivation now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this idea was from this book by Jeff Hayden, who is the author of The Motivation Myth. We feel like we have to have motivation in order for us to do a task, when in reality, we don't. Who said that the prerequisite for you taking action is for you to be motivated? Of course, it's nice when it's there, but if it's not there, you still got to do the task anyway. You got to have the discipline necessary in order for you to complete that task. And that's how we get results. 11, be happy. This is something I struggled with a lot last year. It's, it's almost like as if I had to do something in order for me to have happiness. And really you don't. You can just feel happy just because the weather's nice or for no reason even. Just, just because I wanna kind of imbibe and live more of this year. I don't wanna have reasons and feel guilty for feeling happy when I've done nothing. If you're someone that's a little bit like me, just, just own it. Own that happiness, it's yours for the taking. There's enough happiness in the world that you don't have to feel guilty for taking it. Go ahead and feel it, you deserve it. 12, have an anchor. We can see that life can turn upside down in a matter of months, in a matter of weeks, in a matter of days. And so it's really important for us to have an anchor that can really ground us amongst the chaos. It can be the gym, it can be meditation, it can be yoga, it can be gardening, it can be drawing, I don't know what it is, but you need to make sure that you have an anchor. You just feel so much more secure. For me, it's introspecting. It's the one thing that I know that I can control. I'd highly recommend your anchor not being a person because if it is a person, what happens is, is that people can leave. And when people leave and you, you're anchored to them, it can actually feel like once they go, your life can become quite unstable and it feels like some part of you is missing. When that happens, you can end up going into a very negative headspace, which is not what we want. Whereas if we can have our anchor as things that we can control more of, then we can have faith that that's gonna be quite a stable part of our life and isn't necessarily going to change. But I'll let you decide what you think is best for you. Number 13, learning is constant. This is something I really want to take into this year, especially. I feel like I want to fall in love with learning. I did a lot of learning in high school and I learned a lot in uni as well with a lot less passion and energy. I think I got annoyed with the fact that, oh my gosh, it's this, it's that, right? I have to do this, I have to do that. What I realized was as you get older and especially when you get into your twenties, you have a whole area of things that all of a sudden hit you right across the face challenges and things that you never thought you would have to face you're going to have to learn how to manage your finances apply for a job you know have a stable relationship do this do that when all those things are kind of hitting you at your 20s there's a whole lot of lessons that you're going to have to learn rather than us having the mentality of like oh man i got to learn this thing oh man it's another thing that i have to do right rather than us having that type of mentality we can actually fall in love with the process. We just kind of shift that mindset by understanding that learning is constant and fall in love with learning, then it's a lot better for us. Number 14, execute, execute, execute. I feel like a lot of us sometimes get caught up in the thinking and planning process of doing something. Whilst that is a really important part, if we spend so much time in those areas, when it gets to actually executing and taking action, we very rarely ever do that. If you're someone that feels like you've been procrastinating a lot and you just stuck in the thinking and planning stages, stop and just start executing. 15, spend wisely. I think a lot of us last year saved a lot of money because we just didn't go out as much. And so we were cooking more at home. We were doing more of this, we we're doing more of that. We weren't driving, so petrol wasn't an expense for us. Let's say for example, that you usually eat out three times a week on a normal week. You go out for two brunches and maybe a dinner. And let's say it's roughly $17 for each of the meals. And let's say you do this for every week of the year. So that's $17 times three times a week times 52 weeks of the year. This would equate to $2,652. That's a lot of money. Now this is not to say that you shouldn't spend money. But what this is saying is that instead of maybe catching up with a friend at a coffee shop or going out for lunch with them, every single time you're gonna catch up with a friend, maybe sometimes you can instead go to a park and just go for a walk. It doesn't cost you guys anything, but you still get to spend time together. It's these little decisions that can actually make such a big difference, right? If we just cut down our spending by like 25, 50%, we can save more and feel that we are a lot more wealthier. And then maybe eventually afford those bigger purchases that we want. So in all, spend wisely this year. On to number 16, express yourself. I feel like a lot of us have this creative potential within us, but we just haven't found the opportunity to express ourselves. 
Maybe we're too scared. Maybe we're too concerned with what other people might think of us. And whatever it is, we should just find something and then do it and see how we can bring more of us into that activity. Whether it be, you know, drawing, whether it be our usual work, whether it be something like video creation, whatever it is. When we find something and we can truly express ourselves, we can genuinely feel a lot happier. For me, the way I'm expressing myself is through making these videos. I had no idea that I'd actually enjoy it this much and it's brought so much more happiness and so much more focus in my life. I thoroughly enjoyed like the whole process from start to finish, from scripting it, from videoing it, from editing it, all the way up until publishing. Right? I've enjoyed every single moment of it and I've lost myself in moments. Like I'd be up at, at like two, three, four a.m. just editing a video because I just forgot what time it was. When we find activity that do that for us, then you know it's good. Then you, then you know it's a good thing for you. 17, you have time. If you can't tell me with 110% conviction that if you grab your phone right now and you look at your screen time, if you cannot tell me that you're spending all of your time on your phone productively, then you have time. Simple as that. 18, respond versus react. This is a very interesting one. One of the biggest things I learned last year is where different people end up depending whether or not they responded or whether they reacted to a situation. Those that have reacted poorly to the whole situation that's going on currently end up in quite a negative headspace where they're just pointing fingers and blaming people. And as a result, feel like they're no longer in control of their lives. Whereas the people that have responded, they have tried to see the opportunity amongst the chaos. They saw it as a chance to spend more time with family, to try new things, to revisit old hobbies that they used to enjoy so much, to start projects that they were putting off for so long. And this is one thing that I'm definitely taking into 2021. 19, read. And if you don't like reading, listen to audiobooks. I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to audiobooks. It's been so much more fun for me, especially when I'm driving. Sometimes I've got seminars that are like two, three, four hours away. And if I'm just listening to music, there's a good chance that I'll fall asleep. Whereas if I'm listening to an audiobook that's really interesting, then I feel like I'm highly engaged, I'm learning a lot, and I feel like so many of the lessons that I have learned have actually just been from books. So I'd highly recommend if you don't read already, that it's something you should definitely get on board with. And if you don't like physically reading stuff, get a Kindle. If you don't like that, you don't have the money for it, then go to a library and borrow a book. Obviously, start off with things that you're interested in initially and then try and branch out so you can broaden your horizons, as they say. 20, multitasking is a perceived benefit. Choosing to do a task one by one rather than all of them together is so much more rewarding, yields so much better results. Like, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but I call myself on my phone, on my laptop, in front of the TV. Like, it's just three screens at one. I'm just, it, it, it's just bad. It's just bad all around. No matter how you look at it, it's just bad. Whereas if I was just on my phone, doing whatever it is that I need to do, just on my laptop, doing whatever it is that I need to do, probably work, right? Or just sitting down and just watching television, I get so much more out of those three tasks individually, rather than being so used to having these three devices open to all at once. Right? I feel like my mind also ends up being quite scattered if I'm just doing too many things at once. So if you're someone that feels like you're quite scattered, right? your mind tends to be like kind of all over the place, try doing things one by one. It actually might help a lot. And I've been trying to practice that for the past couple of days and I'm feeling happier. Hopefully it helps you too. And number 21, the big one. If you made it this far, congratulations. This one is probably the most important thing. And I feel like it's my word and like my focus for this year. And it is consistency. If you do something often enough, you will eventually get better at it. If you create valuable content and post it often enough, eventually people will see it and then you'll be rewarded accordingly. It's as simple as that. We just got to be consistent with our habits, with our work, with people. But this is probably the biggest thing I want to focus on this year, consistency. Thank you for sticking around for so long. And if you did find this video quite helpful to you, please make sure you like it and you subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and family that you feel like would benefit a lot from it. And if you want to see my last video, you can check it out right here or you can check out this custom playlist right here. But please make sure that you do subscribe. It would actually mean a lot to me and it means so much. I hope you guys have an incredible year ahead. And I guess I'll see you throughout the year. All the best, good luck. And I hope it's not too late to say this, but happy new year.